What's up everybody, it's Alex, the founder and CEO at Motoroso.com, your dedicated mods marketplace. Now, if you've been following along with our channel, you know we've been doing a ton of mods on our 2020 C8 Corvette. We've got MagnaFlow exhaust, KW coilovers, we've got forge line wheels, Brembo brakes, Toyo tires, and the car has been performing even better than the incredible platform we started with. I've been taking it to the racetrack and really dropping our lap times, but we just got back from the Ron Fellows C8 Corvette owner's school out at Spring Mountain Motorsports Resort in Las Vegas, Nevada. Had a blast at that school. So we're going to make a quick video to share our experience from that program with you. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up and then subscribe to the channel and hit the notification so you get all of our upcoming videos. We make these videos to help you find and pick the mods that you want and need. Now, of course, when you're shopping for those mods, you can also get those from us at Motoroso.com where you can browse over a million top name brand products. You can reach us on live chat and you can call us toll free at 833-MOTOROSO. That's 833-668-6767 because we're here to help you find and buy the parts that you need. The Ron Fellows C8 Driving School is available to anybody that wants to go for around $4,000. But if you bought a C8 Corvette, then Chevrolet subsidizes $3,000 of that cost and you can attend this school for only $1,000. So whether you're watching this video because you didn't know about the program or you knew about the program and you're trying to decide whether or not to go, let me give you the short answer. You would be insane not to go to this. For $1,000, you get luxury accommodations, two days of professional instruction, and you beat up on their C8 Corvette instead of your own. I used over $1,000 worth of tires alone in this two days, so I highly recommend this. This is a great way to get to know this car without beating up on your own and get professional driving instructions so you can really get the most out of your C8. Now there's four major areas of this experience that I'm going to cover off on. The Spring Mountain facilities themselves, like the track, the accommodations, the clubhouse, and the surrounding town. I'm also going to talk about the staff there, right? The Spring Mountain staff as well as the Ron Fellows school staff. Then I'm going to talk about the drills and exercises and trainings that you go through in the program as well as the fourth thing I'm going to cover off on, my favorite, the actual on-track time. The Spring Mountain Motorsports Ranch is located an hour outside of Las Vegas in a little town called Pahrump. Now, this, this town is not much of an attraction. It does seem like Spring Mountain is probably the main attraction in the town, but I didn't spend much time in there. Uh, but I will say that the steakhouse at the Golden Nugget was pretty dang good and a pretty nice place. So I enjoyed that a lot. But once you get to Spring Mountain Ranch, you realize they have pumped millions and millions of dollars into this place. It is really, really nice. And it has high security. You get in, everything's clean and well organized. You go to the clubhouse and it looks like a country club. I haven't been to too many country clubs. I don't play golf, but it was really nice. Um, and then you go to the accommodations. Now we were in the condos and this was like a luxury hotel room with a kitchen. So if I needed to cook, I could, but I didn't need to cook because the food also impressed me. It was legitimately good and I'm pretty picky about how I eat. And they had a little something for everybody. And of course, when you're ready to wind down, you can play basketball in the basketball courts. You can throw horseshoes or you can relax in the pool or the hot tub. And of course, the hot tub was my choice for winding down before I got a good night's sleep to get started the next day. Now the staff at Spring Mountain facility itself were all courteous and friendly and a few of them went out of their way just to make sure that we had everything that we needed while we were on site there, which was impressive and, ex and really a switch of pace from being at Buttonwillow or Laguna Seca where there just is no services like that. And then the staff at the Ron Fellows School, which actually operates inside uh, the Spring Mountain facility, now these guys were a whole nother level. These are professionals with racing experience and these guys are excellent communicators and they really know what they're doing. I mean, they can coach somebody who has no experience behind the wheel of a car on a racetrack on up to people that are actually really skilled and know what they're doing and can help take them to that next level. Now, I have a lot of experience on racetracks on motorcycles, but I'm basically brand new to cars. I have fewer than six track days under my belt, but I was able to get around the track pretty well and I understand a lot of the concepts, but these guys were able to really uh, mentor me with some really useful pointers and tips, some of them even even having motorcycle experience and helping translate that into the car and that was hugely helpful. So now I can't wait to get back out on track in our modded C8 to put to use everything they've taught me and help see uh, like how do my lap times come down at Buttonwillow, a place where I know I've been able to do a 202. 
Next up, they took you through a number of trainings in the classroom and drills on track to get you familiar with the car and what it's capable of. Now, the PDR training was one of my favorites. This is where they actually show you how to use that performance data recorder if you paid for that option in your Corvette. Now, I'm not talking about just how to turn it on and record. I'm talking about how to actually use the data that it's pulling up because it's showing you throttle position, brake position, G-forces, steering wheel angle, and there's a bunch of overlays that you can use to actually understand Understand what you're doing in the car and this is a great way of doing light data analysis with a driving coach and actually learning how to drive better and improving your performance in the car based on this thing that's built right into the car already it's actually pretty sophisticated and this training was really useful and showed me things I didn't yet know now they also give you a little bit of an introduction course to the Cosworth Toolbox, which is a separate piece of software that you install on a PC, but you can take your recordings from the PDR, plug it into a computer, and analyze your data at a much deeper level in this Cosworth Toolbox. Now software like this literally used to cost 30 grand like 10 years ago, and today it's just free and comes with the car. And it's basically using telemetry data practically. It's not quite that sophisticated like a Formula One team, but it's really intense amount of data that you can use to do deep dive analysis on your lap times, your lines, your braking points, your acceleration points, what the car is doing at every single point of the lap and using that to really analyze what you're doing. So for anybody that wants to get serious about tracking their car or is even thinking about competing, the fact that you can combine the data that you have from your PDR with this software and it's all included once you've bought the PDR is truly incredible. And we're planning on using this a lot more moving forward when we go out to try and see just how good we can get at Button Willow Laguna Seca and the other tracks planning to go to. Now they're also going to take you through all of your electronic modes and settings in the car, especially important if you have the Z51 package. Now the car you are already familiar with, weather, tour, sport, and track mode, I'm sure you know what those are already. But under track mode you have performance traction management settings that allow you to put the car in wet, dry, sport one, sport two, or race mode, and then you can also turn off the stability control all together. So they really walk you through what each of those settings means and how the electronics are gonna work in each of those settings. Now, because I have an ego, just like everybody else, I wanted to put that thing straight in race mode, and I have when I've been going to the racetrack. But now that I understand exactly what the sport one and sport two modes will let me do, frankly, when you get into sport two and race, it turns off the traction control and the a braking assist that will stop you from spinning and rotating the car. And frankly, after spinning out of control at Button Willow, nothing bad happened, but if a car had been right behind me or if I span, spun off track, I could have really done some serious damage. And I'd like to try and avoid that as much as possible. So I actually learned in that training that I'm probably gonna end up keeping the car in the Sport 1 mode and I have a better understanding of all the features and functionality in the car and that's always a plus. Now, in addition to the in-class training, they're gonna put you in the car and take you out and do some drills and exercises. This is not the big track time, which is obviously the most fun, but these were also a lot of fun to really understand what are the limits of this car. And in some cases, you're really beating up on their Corvettes instead of your own, which is really cool because you can find out what those limits of performance are. Now they are fun, but people made a lot of mistakes. So I'm gonna tell you what mistakes I saw people making, I'll tell you what mistakes I made, I'll tell you what I learned from it, and then you can take this to the training and kick butt in each of these exercises. One of the first drills we performed was the serpentine exercise. Now this is five cones out on an open tarmac that you're trying to get around uh, the outside of as quickly as you can. Now a lot of people made mistakes here and I think it's because they weren't thinking through exactly what was the line that they needed to take through here to get through the quickest they can, which is ironic because that is exactly what they're trying to teach you here. Now most people's in inclination here was to just get around each cone as tight as possible, making it the shortest distance. Well, the problem is if a car is at speed, it can't really get through in that tight turning radius. And so what would happen is people would go through, they'd get around cone one, get around cone two, but then they'd swing way wide, then they're trying to overcorrect, and they'd go wide and then they just end up somewhere on the track and lost. And so what you need to be doing is thinking about the best line through, not necessarily always the shortest and tightest. And in this case, the best line through is still the same very simple left-right swoop, but you're taking as wide an entry in as you can, and you're apexing at the cone you're trying to get around. This allows you to carry more speed and you basically treat the last cone that you are at at like an apex exit apex so going around that first cone swing wide get around that second cone that allows you to carry speed throughout the whole course going wide there you go I'm back right nice there you go 
go out. Now, the other thing that they're trying to teach you here is how to use your side windows, which most people get stuck and really dependent on using the windshield only. But on a racetrack, to look through corners and get all the visibility you can, you need to learn how to use your side windows. So in the second and third runs, they're going to cover your front windshield. And this can make people pretty uncomfortable. But what they force you to do is as you leave the line, you have to look through your driver's side window until those cones line up. Now, when those cones are in a solid line, that's your turning point. Crank that left turn, get down to the cone like an apex, and then head back out by looking out your right window over to where your exit apex is gonna be setting up for your second cone. And as you do that, you're looking out your right window for your cones to line up, that's your turning point. Crank it over to the right and apex that cone, then rinse, lather, repeat as you go through. If you do this properly, you should literally be able to do this just as quickly as is as if you had your windshield uncovered. One of our other drills was the wet ABS drill. Now, ABS stands for anti-lock brakes, but it also stands for the ability to brake and steer. What they're going to have you do is accelerate up to 35 miles an hour down to this uh, first set of cones where everything is wet. They've got a constant stream of water going across this pavement, making it very slick and having very low grip. And against all of our better judgment, you're just going to slam on those brakes as hard as you can when you get to those cones and hold onto those brakes brakes until you come to a complete stop and you're going to be amazed that that car on wet pavement can stop before the first set of cones it will stop in a much shorter distance than you think now the mistakes that i saw people making here is their inclination was to hit the brakes hard and then slowly meter the brakes off and coast to a stop what you want to do in this exercise is really learn how hard this car can brake when the analog brakes engage and really just hold on to that brake pedal all the way until the car comes to a stop now they're also going to put a guy at the other end of the track with a with a pointer. And when you come on your second and third runs, they're going to point left and right. And when you get to that first set of cones and you slam on your brakes, you're going to swerve to the direction that they've showed you. And you're going to be amazed that the car can still steer, you have control, and you can come to a stop before that first set of cones. Now the launch control exercise, which is pretty straightforward. You start at one set of cones and you haul butt up to the second set of cones, but you get to do this using their launch control feature. Now, this is great because I didn't want to do this in my car too many times. Even though it is covered under warranty, it's pretty hard on the drivetrain and beating up your car in launch mode is really kind of a, a little bit irresponsible and unnecessary because, hey, it's fun, but frankly, I like being on a track more than I like doing launches. But in their car, you get to put it in launch mode and you hold down the brake pedal with your left foot really, really firmly. It gets the car up to 3,500 to 4,000 RPMs and keeps it stuck there while you put the foot down to full throttle and then you, when you take your foot off off the brake it just shoots the car forward and gets you up to speed as fast as it can and it really works well now this car is capable of 0 to 60 in 2.9 seconds but on these cold days on these tires and um, uh, at this altitude at the Ron Fellow School you're not going to get a 2.9 second 0 to 60 time we were seeing 3.2 to 3.5 which is still really fast and really fun the wet figure eight was a really interesting exercise as well. They gave you two cones and all you did was skid around on the wet surface, trying to break the rear free and then use the steering to overcorrect or sorry, to correct and get the car straightened out. And of course, the first few times you undercorrect, this, a couple times you overcorrect and this really was enjoyable. And you could treat this like a am learning how to drift exercise or you could treat this as a what's the fastest way that I can get through the figure eight uh, while sliding the rear but using the front to control that and getting away around in a controlled manner. One of my favorite exercises was the oval drill, and this is intended to teach you two separate types of corners, hard, hard 90 degree corners and turns that might have more of a sweeping approach or a decreasing radius where the turn gets tighter towards the end of the turn, often causing you to miss your apex or overcook the corner and run off the track or run wide. And in this very short course, you're able to do tons of laps, probably 10 to 15 laps. They're very, very short, maybe five to seven seconds all the way around. And as you go into your first corner, it's a tight 90 degree left, and then you can unwind, get on the throttle and go up to the sweeper, which has a decreasing radius. So you're really fitting in a lot of education in a very short period of time. And it gave me a whole new appreciation for NASCAR drivers, to be honest. It really took its toll on the left side of my body, holding myself tight as we turned left constantly. 
Now, the other thing that they were teaching us here was the different types of braking that you might have for corner entry. On the 90 degree turn, you're getting all of your braking done. Very, very hard initial braking, then tapering off, letting the car settle, and then getting off the brake and turning in so that you can unwind and get on the throttle on the exit of the corner. But on the sweeper, you're able to give hard braking initially, but then trail brake into the corner, meaning you're maintaining 70, 50, 40, 30% braking pressure as you get down into the apex of the corner, scrubbing off speed with the tires, but allowing you to enter that corner much, much faster. And this is really unique um, a training drill for learning these two different types of braking back to back really, really quickly. And I had a ton of fun on this drill. And my favorite event was the autocross. Now, this is a cone course. So if you make a mistake, there's no big deal. You're not going to damage the car. You're not going to hit anything. You're not going to run off the road into the gravel. It just doesn't matter. So you can really hang it out. They will give you a penalty of one second per cone that you hit. So make sure you don't hit any cones if you want to get the best time on this event. Now, this is a very simple course, as you can see. It's a Two right turns, a left turn, and then the keyhole up here where you go around this cone. And you can enter on the right and turn left through here, or you can enter on the left and turn right through here. Personally, I liked going into the left and turning right through here. And after I talked to some of the instructors after the event, they suggested that to be the best way to do this. But overall, your best way to get through this course is to stay left, get a late apex, get a drive up this first, essentially back straight, and get a good entry into this first corner. You want to late apex that. Then make sure you get a good exit apex, but get back over to the right side of the track to set up and get good entry for the left-hand turn, which of course you want to take it out and get the best drive you can down back to the keyhole. Entering from the left, you then turn right. You're set up well to get a good drive to come back on for a late entrance into this right-hand turn, drift that out to the left, getting back over again to the right so you're set up properly for your left-hand turn, and make sure you get as much throttle as you can from this turn up, then braking hard, catching a little bit more throttle before you cross this line into the braking box. A lot of people use too much brake and they coasted into here and they really gave up a lot of time. You can get a little bit more throttle on that last corner into the braking box and then slam those brakes on. And if you come to a stop at the very last minute on that braking marker, you have done the best possible lap time that you can do. Now, I messed up on every single run that I did. I overdrove in a few places. I lost, lost control of the rear in a few places. I never got one good, solid, clean run that I was really proud of. And But I did end up getting down to a low 40 second, 40.1. And two more drivers in the class, that there was 15 drivers total. Two of the other drivers did get into the high 39. So technically, I was the third fastest out of the group, which really did bother me because I'm a very competitive guy and I really wanted to do better. So if I went back next time, I would focus on being really smooth through this course because if you lose control of the car, it can cost you so much time on this course. The key to this is smooth brakes, smooth throttle, and keeping the car stable as you get through these corners. And lastly, the best part of this whole school was when we got to go out on the big track and actually pull the pin on these C8 Corvettes and put down our fastest lap times we could. Now, my course took place on the north track. Now, there are three different tracks for these schools, so when you go, you may not have the same track. But when you arrive, they're gonna give you a printed track map that'll outline your racing line, your braking points, your acceleration zones, and of course, they'll coach you and take you through the track. Now, if you do get the north track, I'm gonna give you a couple pointers that will definitely help you hit the ground running. If you study that map before you go a little bit or watch this video, when you get out there, you'll be quick out of the gate. The areas where people struggled the most were in turns three and five. In turns three, everybody would go in way too hot off the straightaway. They wouldn't get their braking right and they'd mess up their apex and their exit apex and then they'd be in the wrong place to get the best drive through the next uh, S's to get down into what they called the bowl. So if you take a little bit more time going into three, slow down a little bit more, make sure you hit your apex just right and get the best drive you can out of three, you can floor it all the way down through the S's and haul butt down into the into the bowl. When I did this right, I dropped two seconds off my total lap time. The other place people struggled was in turns 5A and B. Now, the key to 5A and B is getting the car turned in way earlier than it feels like you should. This turn feels like a late apex turn. Instead, you want to turn in way before it feels like you should, hit the apex at that first cone. It feels like you're going to crash into the other cone. At the apex of the first cone, 
touch the throttle, the car will drift out, you'll go just past the next cone as a second apex, and then you'll let the car drift out to the exit apex cone where you touch the brakes again, and this is your entrance into 5B. And when you hit those brakes, it settles the car, and then you can crank it down and hit the apex for 5B, and this gives you a great drive at one of the highest speed parts of the racetrack. When I got this right, I dropped another second off my lap time. So in our first on-track session, it was really just a siding lap session. To be honest, it scared me a little bit because we went out and we were going so slowly, I was scared that I had just paid a thousand bucks for a two-day school where they were gonna nanny us and really not let us pull the pin on these cars, which is what I wanted to do. But luckily, my fears were completely unfounded because after a couple drills, they got us into helmets and Hans devices, which is really nice safety equipment for a school like this. And then they got us out on track and let us really pull the pin and do our fastest lap times we could. Now the way they structure this is you go out in a lead follow format. The instructor is in the car at the front and then you're in groups of two or three students behind the instructor. Now each student gets a chance to be behind the instructor for their three to four to five laps and do the best that they can. And trust me, all these instructors are faster than you so you're not gonna get held up by these guys at all and you get to go out there, do your three to four laps, and then you switch off, and then you get to follow the student that's in front of you, and if they're faster than you, try and keep up. If not, you're just gonna get to focus on your lines and your braking points. Now on our first full speed session, we had only seen the track once at slow speed, but I was the first to go in the session and I got to follow the instructor for four laps. In that four laps, I managed to put down a 125.44. So if you're the competitive type, use that to compare to how you do on your first session. Now on day two, one of the first things we did was go out in the car and elite follow. It was cold car, cold tires, and a cold track, and it was in the low 40s. But I had studied the track map, I'd gotten some coaching from the instructors and I managed to get my lap time down to a 121.66, which made me optimistic for where my lap times might go throughout the rest of the day. Knowing that, the instructors gave me a challenge. They told me that getting into the 120s would mean I was pretty quick. But if I could get into the 119s, I was legitimately quick. Now, I'm competitive, so my goal became get into the 119s. Our next session came up at 2 p.m. The temperature of the track had come out to 63 degrees. It was beautiful out. The cars were warm, the tires were hot. My mind was in the game and I was ready to go out and put down a better lap time. Now, I felt really good in this session and I felt like I had been going significantly faster than in my previous sessions, but I made the mistake of putting the wrong overlay on my PDR. So all the data was there, but it didn't show me my actual lap time when we did the video review and went back in. So all I could say was, I felt quick. Luckily, we have one more session to go. Now, the final session of the day came at 3.30 in the afternoon, and the temperature had dropped back down to the low 50s. It was about 52 degrees. Now, this was the last session, though, so we were gonna pull the pin and give it everything that we had and get our fastest lap times. And I felt really good on track. I felt like I had done my fastest lap time of the day. And when we got back in and ran the data through Cosworth Toolbox, we saw that I managed a 120.06. That means I was in the low 20s, pretty quick by the instructor's standards, and I was only six one hundredths of a second away from being in the 119s, and that was my goal, so I'm gonna admit I was a little bit sad, but at least I could say I was the fastest among the drivers out of our 15 students in the class, which was a little bit of a consolation prize for having come in third during the autocross event. And look, I'm not trying to sound comp it's overly competitive here. It really isn't about that. Everybody's trying to just do a little bit better. But with my history on bikes, 10 years of racing bikes on track, um, I need to be quick. If I came back from this training and wasn't the fastest person in the classroom, I was gonna have some splaining to do. So I left the track feeling pretty good about how everything had gone, just with that little aching in the back of my mind bothering me that I hadn't hit the 119s. Well, we got back to the studio, we plugged in the card into the Cosworth toolbox and did a little bit more analysis on how all of my sessions had gone. Turns out that 2 p.m. session where I had forgotten to put the right overlay and we didn't get that lap time in the video review, I put in a 119.98. So by two one hundredths of a second, I got myself down into the 119s and the instructors would claim that I'm legitimately quick, which hey, I'm happy with that. 
Naturally, at an event like this where you've got 15 other people and the instructors, over two days you make some pretty quick friends. So I had a really great time meeting everybody out there. And at the event, end of the event, you know, you say your goodbyes and everything. And then actually they have a little ceremony and they give you a little certificate. And I, I even bought the $40 carbon fiber look plaque. And listen, I know it's a little bit cheesy, but it'll hang on the wall. It'll be a nice little reminder of a great time out at this Ron Fellows Driving School, which hopefully, if you've been watching this video and you haven't decided you got to do this, if you have an opportunity to do so. Um, hopefully this has changed your mind. You must do this. And once you've graduated the program, you can go on to do their level one, level two, and level three training programs, which I don't know what is entailed in all of those, but hopefully one day we'll have an opportunity to go do those programs and we'll make more videos about how much more skills we develop and how much quicker we're able to go. Now, of course, if you like these videos, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and hit that bell so you get notifications for all the videos that we do on our C8 and all the other products we talk about. And of course, when you're shopping for your mods, hit us up at Motoroso.com where you can shop over a million top name brand products. You can reach us on live chat there. We're here to help you plan your mods and you can call us toll free at 833-MOTOROSO. That's 833-668-6767. Thanks for watching.